Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to go over my predictions for who I think is going to win MSI as well as the narratives I'm going to follow, things I'm going to think about um, when watching, um, trying to, to even think about things analytically, and also the players that I'm particularly interested in watching. So um, first things first, the narratives. Um, I think the biggest one that we have to think about, BLG. Golden Road, right? Everybody is, is going to be curious. Can BLG get as far as JDG did last year, win MSI, and um, go into summer and then continue that momentum? Um, will the LPL win it again? And most importantly, LCK question mark. LCK at, at MSI. The, the LCK has not won MSI anytime recently the lec technically has won msi more recently than the lck which is pretty crazy to really think about um the lpl has dominated this uh tournament it is in china so it is um something that we we must monitor um t1 defending their title you know do t1 uh show up And not only do T1 show up, but let's also think to ourselves, um, is how important is the meta going to be? Meta shift. Let's monitor the meta shift. Patch. Including meta shift and patch together because I do, I've been doing videos on the patches throughout the season. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. The patches, more often than not, do affect the meta. It may not affect it the way that you want it to. It may not affect the meta as much as you want it to. But normally, they do change presence in a significant way. We saw 14-6 change five champions, including Smolder, taking it completely out of uh, presence. So, the fact of the matter is, you got to imagine 14-7, 14-8, something's going to come from it. Is that mid lane meta going to be changed massively with the Azir nerf? And what five or six buffs to mid lane, uh, Rise and Galio to move around the rift, but also Silas, Akali, LeBlanc, things like that that are more uh, melee and assassin oriented. Um, which you know, that's very different vibe than what we've been dealing with, right? We've been dealing with a, a control mage meta. Um, do the 80 carry does Draven become a big pick at this event for Jackie Love, for Guma, for Han Sama? You know, things like this have to, in my opinion, have to be seriously considered. Do, does Graves become a pick at this event because it's been buffed? You know, people might just outright say no because their experience in solo queue says so. But sometimes buffs and nerfs can just change teams' minds whether it's actually warranted or not. Um, they could just, I mean, end up not picking it because they're like, oh, that must stink now and not even really investigate it. Um, so some things to think about younger players so so younger rookies at event i'm thinking of players like cream i'm thinking of players like uh busio masu um june this is his first event major you know uh, uh international event you know, what about uh, Emo for for GAM Esports? Like, is he going to be given the grace he deserves? Um, I, I'm adamant about that, that I think if, if people start flaming him for just inting his face off, that's just going to really show just how ignorant that person is to the entire situation. Um, I said it in the, the, the video for mid lane. It's like APA men for Detonation Focus Me last world. He was at the event. And some people gave him shit. And unfortunately, I mean, he was doing it, I think, for his kid. He would end up doing it and then, you know, did it for his future kid or, or whatever. He was like, I did make it to Worlds. I did complete my, um, you know, goal. So, you know, it's just something to think about. that Cream in, in particular, because Cream is obviously on a team that um, is competitive. So that's the thing. Um, tempo. This is going to be something that I'm going to really monitor early 
So things like lane swap and, and, and etc. So early game tempo. If you follow my channel for a while, um, you will know that I have tried different attempts at stats to try and figure out how effective teams are in the early game. How many you know, plays do they attempt? Where are they trying to go with their pressure? Um, and actually quantifying it with a number. Um, and, and then comparing it and then saying to ourselves, okay, this team had more attempts at a play than this team. This is the gold situation at the time the first tower fell, which in my opinion is more so the end of laning phase than 14, 15 minutes, whatever we want to make it. Um, you know, when turret plates fall, I, I believe it's personally when the first turret falls. But regardless, when that happens, who has, you know, is, is it the team that's more active, that's getting around the rift, that's executing ganks or even attempting dives and, and, and creating actual tangible pressure, not just simple jungle proximity or uh, a roam that oh we don't know where he is sort of deal like i mean actually getting into lane and actually pushing somebody off of wave blowing a summoner getting a kill um doing something like that like which team is more active and then what's the gold situation at the end and then is there a correlation between win rate is there a correlation between win rate and that when we have teams that are even um you know t1 astral is not going to be something that I really think about like this is not impacting that at all this I mean the, well theoretically if Snaker and Ackerman come out like uh, Shogun and Taki did in 2022 MSI who knows um, but um, you know I'm a massive Shogun that that play will forever be one of my favorite moments in LL Esports that play there was just so bold. Oh, my God. And it literally knocked Guma on his ass for like six months. So um, just what a what a play. That that guy should be in a major region. That he, 100%. The fact that he isn't is a, is a damn shame. Um, so I'm going to be following that. I'm going to be following um, Barons and uh, Penalty Kills. So you think, oh, Baron Power Play. Well, Power Play originates at least in, in my traditional sports world hockey right and then there's the penalty kill on the opposite side so um, not I'm gonna track how effective teams are with their barons and I'm also going to track how teams do against Baron you know are they losing the game against Baron necessarily are they able to you know limit the damage to what a, you know a, a couple K gold maybe they were able to trade a Drake for it Um you know, how, how are teams n not nullifying Baron, because more often than not, Baron's going to be positive, but limiting the damage. So just something to, to consider. Now, players at this event, who am I going to be following? Well, first and foremost, if you watch the support video from last night, hopefully you um, did see it on YouTube. If you didn't, um, it's, it's there. I'm going to be watching the support meta, so on Caria, Busio, those three in particular, those three have the most unique champion pools at this event, in my opinion, and they're the three most willing to try weird things. So I'm watching them with excitement in hopes that they pull something out or, or they're willing to put even what they've shown on tape out there and say, oh, you thought I wasn't going to play this? Well, here it is um, on the biggest stage where a lot of players aren't willing to do that. Um, other players I want to watch, Cream. Um, because Cream, this is his moment. Okay. Um, Cream, a lot of people think Tien's the make or break for top. To me, it is Cream. Will Cream show up at this event in China and be able to handle the moment. It is the first international event. I think it's personally very, I think it's a coin flip whether he flops or not because it is a is, is massive moment. And that's not indicative of the rest of his career. A lot of people see a player struggle in their first event and say, oh, this player's a choker, they're a fraud, this or that. And those sort of buzzwords just kind of show how just, I don't, ignorant that individual is. Because to, like, 
The expectations you are placing on the player makes you the fraud, not the player. The player, the, the player is not deceiving the majority. I mean, at least personally, I'm not deceived by Cream. I know what Cream is. Cream is a very talented young player. Very talented, but there is a possibility of struggle. So I personally, I'm not deceived. I don't get how people can be deceived by that to c consider a player a fraud. Um, you know, and then they say, oh, well, you're trying to, you know, get all up in the grammar and this or that. It's like, no, you know, you're just trying to, you know, flame a player because you, you can't get out of gold too. And you think that you would know whether they're terrible at the game or not. Like rank doesn't make a difference, but you're just so in your shit. You can't handle watching a player possibly struggle as you struggle to type out what you're saying. You wouldn't even put your face on a video to say, I, I mean, shit, my production sucks and I still make a video. Um, so it kind of goes to show that anybody, any Joe Schmo can make a video. So, I mean, it's, it is here, neither here nor there. Um, so cream player I'm watching carry you on, um, Gen G pays, pays his development is something I want to watch. Um, I also want to see, um, I was on the tip of my tongue. Oh, just the junglers in general. Ho Jose De Odo. Like, that's... Jose has has me excited for this tournament. Junjia. Levi. Just like three... Think about it, Three minor region junglers that I don't get to see very often because I don't have the time to watch minor regions play. And they are in their element at this event they are competitive at this event they deserve a lot more credit than they're given especially um these two levi gets his for the most part but junjia and, and jose do not they should be in major regions on um decent teams um jose especially in the lcs or lec um jose blows isma out of the water and he doesn't in his face off like Bo. as two examples um I won't get into Marcoon. Marcoon, I think something's going on with Rogue that just for some reason took Marcoon and made him uh, super passive when honestly I thought he would do well. Um, but just some players I'm just off the top of my head I've, I'm thinking about um, at, at this event. Um, you know, and I feel like a lot of them are players that a lot of people, you know, they're probably thinking of others, if, if you will. So um, Knight and Chovy for an example. Now, um, prediction. So, the four teams that I expect to get out of play-ins. Well, um, no shocker here, but I'm going to pick T1 and Top Esports. Um, if neither team, if one of those two teams does not get out of play-ins, then we have the largest upset, I would say, in a very long time. Um, the two teams after it. Fnatic, for sure. Um, I just feel like... No matter what, Noah is going to win those team fights to get them past PSG. Because um, PSG is the one that you have to worry about. Gamma are a disaster. Loud are loud. And then uh, uh, Stral is, is just here for the ride. So, um, Fnatic. Now, Fly and PSG. That's, that's tough. That's tough because, uh, personally... Bwipo, Inspired, well, Bwipo, much better than Ozzy. Inspired, Junjia, Wash. Maple, Jensen, Wash. Bot lane. Betty, Woody, Masubusio. If Masubusio show up and the moment is not too large, they could win that lane. If they don't, Betty and Woody will punish them. They really will. But history says only the LEC doesn't get out of play in. So we're going to do um, fly because statistically speaking, um, NA has a 0% win rate getting out of play -ins. And this this could be the year. Knocked on wood. Now, um, I'm going to rank the teams 8 through 1 that are remaining because the, the, the draw will be random. Um, and frankly, it's the second best team could finish like 
fourth or third because they played the best team in, in semifinals double only this i hate double elam i just absolutely hate double elam but regardless um so top 18 we're gonna rank the teams winner at the end eighth place team liquid tl give me the vibes of uh mad lions koi last year um just hmm Umpty played on Breon and Jin Air Green Wings for a very long time. Those days, just, I can't eliminate. I'm sorry. I'm, somebody got upset with me in the bot lane video because they didn't watch me say that. They thought I just, not bot lane, um, jungle video, but they didn't watch me actually explain that I just cannot get the bro days out of my head. Um, and that is, is what it is. Um, TL. Seventh. Eighth. Eighth. Seventh, FlyQuest. Um, personally, I think Fly and Fnatic are, are pretty close. We're going to go Fnatic 6. It's the same kind of deal with... Um, the thing is, like, Fly clearly have an advantage in top lane, Blippo into Oscar, but Humanoid into Jensen is an advantage for Fnatic. And then bot lane is the same deal as the PSG deal, except that Noah and June are better. So, um, Fnatic... Fnatic are sixth, and then easily G2 are fifth. So this is, um, shouldn't be a shock to anybody that the group of the, the Western teams are the bottom four. Eastern teams are the top four. And you might say, yeah, well, what if G2 plays uh, FlyQuest in the first round? Then, then they get to win, and they're going to be top four. Like I said, this is me ranking the eight teams that remain. Pick whatever you want as a possible scenario like i'm acknowledging that the finishing order could be different but in my opinion this is how the teams look going into the event best to worst um and whoever they play after that is what it is um it doesn't we just take that as it comes now the four teams that um remain t1 gen g top esports blg um, T1 or fourth. Looking at those Draven numbers, someone asked me to something about Jackie and Hans, and they looked at Guma, and Guma's Draven, in terms of damage, is not nearly as effective as Jackie's. Um, so that's something that's factoring into my mind right now. And not to mention. T1 did struggle at the end of playoffs. The bot lane's good, but the, all the bot lanes are good at this event. Um, Canyon Chovy are really, really good. Um, it's just the thing is, like, third is going to be um, Gen G. So I'm going with the LPL again. And I feel like, you know, these, I'm not I'm not the type that make, exaggerate my, my predictions. Like, it is what it is. Um, Pays and the Hens don't necessarily benefit from the Draven buff as well as the other three bot lanes. Um, Canyon and Chovy are very, very, very good. And Chovy could beat Cream and that could take Top Esports out of it. But Top have the better bot lane and the better, uh, top, uh, better bot lane and better top laner. Canyon into Tian. I don't know if Canyon, because Canyon's facilitating, I don't know how much he can really, um, Gap Tian, if you will, as long as if Tian just plays facilitator, like people are suggesting that um, uh, Tian, if you ban Tian Zin Zhao and this or that, he's useless. It's like, no, now you're putting him on facilitators, and that's where he, in my opinion, is best. And then we can free up Cream to actually play the game of League of Legends um, and maybe give Jackie and Mako more gold. Weird concept. All of a sudden, you force them to play probably how they should be. Their coaching staff. Another narrative here. Um, LPL staffs. Top Esports and BLG. Very uh, inexperienced. Big Wave. Been to international events a couple times. But I don't think. Not nearly with this amount of pressure. Um, as the head coach. Um, and then. I mean Despair is brand new for Top Esports. So honestly I could see a, a coach gap. Between him and then you got Coma and uh, uh, Kim. I mean, those two could definitely uh, outsmart Despair if if, um, 
it comes down to it. But second, we're going to go top esports first, BLG. And unintentionally, as I work through this, it clearly is LPL, LCK, LEC, LCS. Um, just as it is, is what it is. Um, that's definitely how I would rank the regions going into this tournament. Um, just frankly, just MSI, LCK can't win this tournament. I don't get it. Um, but BLG just have the best player you can argue in every role. Gen G have weaknesses. Top Esports has a weakness in mid lane. BLG just don't have one right now. Um, so that's a thing. Like BLG are coming in hot. Can Top Esports win this event? Yes. The meta in mid lane could become very advantageous for Cream. Very reminiscent of DRX with Zekka. Zekka very dominant on those champions as well. Cream to me is baby Zekka. If, Ze if Cream was on DRX in 2022, I think they still win Worlds. I think that just still happens. Um, because Cream could have done just the same job. Uh, but, you know, that and, and, the, and the Draven buff could also help top esports. And doesn't help BLG because Elk really does not play Draven. That is something to think about. He does not play Draven. Everybody else that's very good at this tournament does, um, which is kind of weird. Um, it's very reminiscent of how I thought of Knight and Azir. Um, Elk and Draven, not a pair. I mean, then the West, of course, I mean, shoot. I mean, T1's weakness is themselves. If, if Faker can't mind control owner, it's a problem. Um, it'd be great if Caria took over the tournament just because, like I said in my support video, I'm a Caria fan. Um, but... You know, as in Kerry just institute the meta again like he did at Worlds. That was great. Two, two Worlds in a row where the support is who is making the meta happen. Um, and then LEC, LCS, I mean. LEC just has players that have been here before and, and done work. Um, Fly has a bot lane that leaves big question marks. And I just am not sold on Team Liquid. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you're disrespecting Team Liquid. I'm just not sold on them. I'm really not. Um, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.